Okay, we're going to be looking at trends and graphs and essentially how to describe what we're looking at. So the question asks us, describe the relationships of the graphs. So the very first graph we're going to look at is going to be Jack's earnings. Okay. So this graph on the y-axis has given the amount of money Jack will make in 10. Okay, so they haven't actually put the correct values here. They're just counting up by a scale of 1, but they're saying it's in 10. So in other words, the number 1 represents in real value of money how much? 10. We'd have to multiply 1 by 10, so we'd get $10, which means this is 20, 30, and you just kind of continue that pattern up. Okay, so that's what this graph is really saying. Now, it also shows a relationship in hours, and it looks like these are just strictly hours worth. So this would be 1, 2, 3, the scale is just going up by 1. This earning potential of jacks, can anyone describe what this graph looks like? Okay, so it's positive slope. Anyone know what type of graph this is where it's called when it's completely straight? Linear. This is a linear graph. And linear graphs have something special about them. Okay. Now, we won't be able to describe the relationship of every graph we look at, but this one we can tell so far looks like it's linear. What's special about linear? Uh, it's, consistent. it's consistent. The rate of change, and that's going from one point to another, is the same everywhere we look on this graph. Okay. So no matter where we are, and it just so happens we have numeric values that can help us out, but no matter where we go, the rate of change, rate of change, is constant. Okay, and that's important for for linear graphs, okay? So the rate of change is constant. So for every hour works, for every hour he works, he earns a consistent amount of money. And it pretty much looks like he's earning for every hour ten dollars. Seems to be going up by roughly that rate. Okay? So every hour is ten dollars. <laughs> See that door. The second graph here we have is the amount of compound interest. So this is completely separate. Now this one again, our y-axis is in hundreds, okay? And our x-axis is time. And just like our other one was money versus time, they'd put the independent variable on the x-axis. So let's keep that in mind. So most likely our money is dependent on our time. We knew that was definitely the case with Jack's earnings. This amount of compound interest. Now, this one is not quite the same as our last one. Does anyone have a prediction of what type of graph this might be called or what kind of shape is it making? Okay, this could be an exponential graph. It also looks like what else? Yeah, it looks like it could be possibly half of a parabola. We'd actually have to do some calculating. It could be a parabola like this or it could be exponential. We're unsure. Both of them are acceptable, okay? But in this one, I wouldn't ask you for that because we don't have enough information. What I would ask you to do is to describe the trend. So, for instance, the rate of change, what is happening to it the farther we go along with time? It's doing what? Increasing. So the rate of change is increasing more and more rapidly. Okay. So when we start off, what I'm going to call ROC, so our rate of change is increasing and it will say slowly. Okay. As we get to the middle, the ROC is, we'll say, increasing. And remember, this is all in comparison to another part of the graph. As we go farther in time, the ROC or the rate of change is increasing rapidly. Okay. So these are all important words we would use to help describe the trend in this graph. Okay. Um, can we say there's a definite maximum here? Is it hitting a top point or a definite minimum? What would the maximum be? Can anyone guess? Is there going to be a ceiling to this? If I leave this money in for the end of time, so I die and I never take my money out, am I going to stop earning money at any point? There really is no maximum to this. Is there a minimum? What? What is the minimum here? Yeah, it looks like at zero, right? If I never really put the money in, this would be considered our minimum. But it doesn't look like we really have a maximum to this. And was there a maximum to Jack's earnings? 
if Jack just continued to work for the rest of his life, he'd continue to earn more money, okay? So there's no ceiling. That's what we call a ceiling today. Okay, now let's use that information to go to two more. Okay, the next one is temperature of cooling coffee. Now, the numbers I don't want you to look at as much. I kind of use just the same graph. I want to just look at the trend in this graph. So, this is temperature in reference to time. Okay? So, who can help me describe what's possibly happening in this situation? We don't have too, too much information. Okay, that's right. This could be an exponential decay. Okay? That could be one way we're describing it here. What is happening right here at zero in time? It's at its peak, or what would another word we could use to call it? So most likely this is our what? Starts with M. Maximum. Minimum would be the opposite, right? This is our maximum. So if we're talking about a cooling cup of coffee, this is probably the temperature that we took it out of the pot or whatever it was making the coffee at, right? This would be our max temperature. So we take it out, we put it on the counter. What's happening with the rate of change as we go across this? It's doing what? It's dropping or slowing down. So the greatest rate of change, okay? The greatest rate of change is decreasing. Here we'll say here's the greatest. This has the greatest decrease in temperature right at the beginning. In the middle, we're decreasing. And then towards the end, we have a decrease, but this is the least decrease in temperature. It looks like it's almost becoming what? What would we say it might actually become what at one point? The temperature of this coffee. Do you think it's going to hit zero? Does it look like that trend is going to hit zero? So you think this coffee is going to freeze? You're sitting in this room? What's probably going to happen? What's it called? Room temperature. That's right. Good science, man. So it's probably going to hit something we would know as room temperature, and it's going to be consistent here. Okay? So we'd say it looks like maybe after 9, 10 minutes, the temperature is at its, well, we'll consider the minimum. It won't get any colder or warmer. It's hit its room temperature. That's probably what's happening in this case. Okay? And then finally, fertilizing a field. Okay, so we'll do a little description. Again, the numbers, don't worry too much about. I just want you to talk about the trend in this graph. So our y-axis is crop yield. So in other words, what they're saying is the amount of, say we're growing corn, this is the amount of corn we're able to grow dependent on how much fertilizer we use. Okay, so this graph is different. Um, Owen, do you remember what this one might be called? You said it earlier. Yeah, this looks like it might be a quadratic relationship. We'll get into that later. Okay, so this looks like it could be quadratic. How can we describe the trend in this graph to start off? For instance, at this point, how much fertilizer are we using? We're using zero fertilizer at this point. Oops. Oh, yes, that happens once in a while. Yeah, go ahead. So, when we're using zero fertilizer, it looks like we have a certain rate or a certain amount of corn <coughs> this thing is going to grow. What happens from there as we start to use more fertilizer? Yes. Okay, so we're increasing here at this point. Now, this one, I really want to micro look at this, okay? Where is the greatest increase in rate of change when using fertilizer? This is hard. So just look. I just want you to focus. I wonder if I can do this. Yes. If we're looking at this, so this is kind of sloped on a curve here. Where's the greatest increase in change? What's that? Okay, even more specifically, between what two? Let's say we're just using the values 1, 2, and 3. What would be the best? Between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 0 and 1? I know it's really hard to see, but I want you guys to recognize that if it is quadratic, like we think, the greatest rate of change will actually be from 0 to 1. Okay? And then from there, the rate of change drops a little and drops a little more. So instantly, we'd say the rate of change is increasing the most at the beginning. And I know it's hard to say here, but the ROC has the greatest increase there. So increase the greatest at that point. 
Then at a specific point here, this is what part of the graph? Vertex, or known as, we're using simpler terms. It starts with an M. We talked about middle. Maximum. Right. This would be the maximum. In other words, this is the maximum yield. Oops. Hope that doesn't change it again. The maximum yield that we would get. So at a specific point, we use a certain amount of fertilizer. This is the maximum yield. Does anyone know what the rate of change is there? There's a tough question. At the maximum point, the rate of change is zero. Okay? It's not going up or down. So the rate of change here, and this is important, I want you to know that the ROC there is equal to zero. It's not going up or down at this point. After that, so as we get to the right, what starts to happen to our crop yield as we use more and more fertilizer? It's decreasing, and then as we go farther and farther along, it's decreasing at a what rate? A rapid rate. It's getting larger and larger the amount we decrease. So in other words, there is a maximum point with our fertilizer. We get to this point, if we keep fertilizing our field, we start not producing as much crop. I guess we're killing it with the amount of fertilizer we're using here, okay? So at this point, the rate of change, I guess we'll do it in blue. The rate of change is starting to decrease here, okay? The rate of change is decreasing, and it's decreasing at its greatest towards the bottom, it looks like. Okay, we'll say the greatest decrease. Which means, where would the least decrease be? Right by the maximum. That's right. This is where our least decrease would be. When we've hit our maximum and we're just starting out. Okay? So there's many different ways we can describe these graphs. There's specific wording we use, maximum, minimums, decreasing rates of change, and increasing rates of change.